Word of God. In Scripture, the Word of God and prayer go hand in hand together. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. So the Spirit is using His Word to communicate with us. So if you're believing God is speaking to you on such and such, check it by the Word. If it does not line up with the Word, then it's not of God. Ask your brothers and sisters in Christ. Sometimes it's good to go to a more mature brother or sister and say, hey, I, I've been thinking God has been leading me to do this. What, what do you think about that? And see if you get a confirmation of that word, whether or not it is from God. Sometimes God speaks directly to your heart. Many times I've known God just to speak to my heart. Sometimes God speaks through the circumstances of life. I will see things happen around me and I know God is doing things. Oftentimes I know when God is speaking to me because I have a peace about me. Now that doesn't mean that my circumstances are peaceful. Oftentimes they're not. But if I have a peace about me in the circumstance, then I know I'm doing what God wants me to do. If my heart is unsettled in it, then it's probably not what God is wanting me to do. God wants to communicate with you. Prayer is not like rubbing Aladdin's lamp and getting your wishes to come true. That's not what prayer is. Prayer is how we build our personal fellowship with God, our Father. And it's how we set the priorities of our relationship with Him. This is all about doing life with God. And I cannot say a person, in this case God, is important to me if I don't spend time with Him. So if, I, if I'm saying to you, you're important to me, but I, I, I never even come up and talk to you or won't say a word to you, that, that would be a lie, wouldn't it? You'd look at that and go, Doug, I'm not important to you. You don't even talk to me. How could I be important in your life? The same way with God. Remember, prayer is not a monologue, it's a dialogue. And God wants to have a conversation with us. Prayer is much more than just asking God to give you things. Oftentimes, we think of God as this great big waiter in the sky. Well, Lord, I'd kind of like to have this. And by the way, could you just give me a little bit of that? And while you're at it, how about a little bit more of the other thing as well? Right? And we think of God as that great big waiter in the sky who's got to take our orders. And then He must give us what we ask for. That's not what we see in Scripture. The believer who prays only to ask for things is missing out on many blessings that come from God. Prayer is not about getting our will done on earth. It is about getting God's will done on earth as it is in heaven. There's a prayer of thanksgiving. That's oftentimes we're just thanking God and praising Him. By the way, if you're dealing with any kind of depression, I want to encourage you to spend time thanking God. That is so helpful just to count your blessings, just to thank God for the things that He has done for you. There's the prayer of intercession. This also helps you, by the way, when you're dealing with depressing things, is to get your mind off of yourself and start praying for someone else. Because most of the time we're so obsessed with ourselves. It helps you if you can get your mind away from that. There is the prayer of supplication. That's where we ask for things. There's the prayer of sharing your feelings, the joys and hardships of life. Remember, I've said to you before, until you can really pray your hardships and your troubles to the Lord, you're going to have a hard time reaping the joy of the Lord. You need to be able to pray those things. There's the prayer of praise, where we show our adoration for God. Praying in the Spirit is not a type of prayer like these but the only prayer that is in the will of God. So when you pray these prayers, you need to pray them in the Spirit. So we have a prayer of thanksgiving in the Spirit. Are you following me on that? That's how it's in the will of God. So then without praying in the Spirit, all of this is useless. Just like we learned last time, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. And the only way to understand God's Word is by the power of His Holy Spirit. In the same way, we must pray in the Spirit for our prayers to be according to God's will. This brings us to our next point. Prayer is powerful, but only when it is in the Spirit. 
Warren Wiersbe again says, this is how we pray, to the Father, through the Son, and in the Spirit. And he's right. But what does it mean to pray in the Spirit? See, it's like being filled with the Holy Spirit, which means to be controlled by the Spirit. It's in His will. It's in His power. It's under His direction. So I'm praying under the direction of the Holy Spirit. If you want to know whether a a prayer is in the will of God or not, if it is under the direction of the Holy Spirit, it is in the will of God. So we want to pray under His direction. Remember, it's tied to the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. Prayer is not the only thing Christians are called upon to do in the Spirit, or by the Spirit. And and by the way, that phrase, by or in the Spirit, is pretty much synonymous with each other. It's the same in the Greek. It's, It's in pneuma. So the idea is in the Spirit, or by the Spirit, that's being said there. So listen to this. In the Spirit or by the Spirit, we are told in the Word of God, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So if I live in the Spirit, then I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Are you catching that? You live in the Spirit. We are to pray in the Spirit, but we are also to live in the Spirit. Romans 8, 13 says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So by the Spirit or in the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Philippians 3.3, 3, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Do you remember in John 4, Jesus said that the Father is seeking those who would worship Him. They would worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's not saying God is looking for sincere people. And I know sometimes that, well, God is just wanting sincere. I'm telling you the only way you can worship God is in the Spirit. Period. So if you do not have the Spirit of God, you cannot worship God. That's the point of it. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 16 says, Give thanks in the Spirit. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 says, Restore a wayward brother in the Spirit. Jude 1, verse 20 says, Pray in the Spirit. Our passage here, pray in the Spirit. It appears from these passages of Scripture that the whole life of a believer is to be done in the Spirit. Which includes prayer but not limited to prayer. Now, I do not believe what the Apostle Paul, and I'm going to just take a second here with this. I'm not going to belabor it. I do not believe the Apostle Paul is talking here about speaking in tongues. This is not a sermon on tongues, but I don't believe he's talking about that. Nor is this some kind of heavenly language that he's talking about. And you say, well, Doug, why do you believe that? I believe that according to this passage. Listen again to what the passage says. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Is God wanting you to pray in tongues at all times on every occasion? The answer is no. He's not talking about that in this passage of Scripture. This is not a passage talking about tongues or a heavenly language. But what Paul is saying is your life is to be lived in the power of the Holy Spirit. Moved by the Holy Spirit of God prompted by the Holy Spirit of God, guided by the Holy Spirit of God. Our lives are to be moved and guided by God's power through His Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit of God as you pray. That's what we're talking about. So the question is, how does this happen? I believe Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 can help us in this. It's a a popular verse. Listen to it again, maybe as for the first time. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live, 
In the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So what's he say in this? He says, the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. This praying in the Spirit or by the Spirit happens when I live by faith in the Son of God. It's a prayer of faith. It's about faith. You and I as Christians are in Christ. And all the blessings we have, we have because we are in Christ. All the blessings we have talked about come because you are in Christ. Now I want you to listen to this. We must trust as we pray that the Holy Spirit of God is going to intervene on our behalf and that He is going to guide us in how we should pray. By faith, we believe the Holy Spirit of God is going to prompt us to pray when we pray. By faith, we believe the Holy Spirit of God is going to give us the words to pray. When we don't even have words to pray to our Heavenly Father. We believe the Holy Spirit of God is going to, by faith, guide, guard, and direct our prayers to the Father through His Son, Jesus. This is praying in the Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 helps us. And the Holy Spirit helps in our weaknesses, is what it says. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And by the way, this is not tongues either. What he's talking about here is non, it's not audible. There are no words in it. We don't have words. It's the Holy Spirit speaking our heart to God the Father that's transpiring. The Holy Spirit pleads for us. He says, and the Father who knows our hearts knows that what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And God causes everything to work together. That's what's the next part of that passage for those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. It is the Holy Spirit of God who is the key to prayer. It is the Holy Spirit of God who prays in us, through us, and for us. Only in the Spirit's power can we pray in the will of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 27 says this, Otherwise, you and I could be selfish and out of God's will in our prayers. And by the way, just so you know, whining in the Spirit is not a spiritual gift. I've had that a few times, but it is not a spiritual gift. Paul says, pray at all times and on every occasion and in the power of the Holy Spirit. The biblical formula is that we pray to the Father through the Son in the power of the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Spirit is beyond doubt a mysterious thing. We in the Spirit enter the realm of the unseen world where we are filled with the Holy Spirit and we begin to walk and talk with God the Father to accomplish His will on earth as it is in heaven. I want to tell you, I want you to think about this just for a moment. I'd really like to spend more time here. Think about Jesus in His prayers. How, how He prays to the Father and He spends the whole night in this realm with the Father. He prays to the Father and He is transformed before the eyes of those who are with Him becomes glowing. He's entered into a different realm. I want you to know prayer is where we enter into that spiritual realm. It's not just, it's not just about you know, telling God these things you want. It's about actually entering into this spiritual realm that we're talking about by the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, you are right now seated in the heavenlies. This is, a dip. This is mysterious. It's mystical. It's marvelous. And I want you to know that, that when you be, begin to get this concept where you actually enter the throne room of Almighty God and you have a seat at the Father's table, You've heard me say before as I'm praying, God, I'm not sure what your will is in this, and I, I, I don't want to try to tell God what to do. But listen, I'm a child of God, and I know I have a special seat at your table. And because I have a special seat at your table, I have your ear. 
And so I can say things to you, God. I know that you're listening to me. And I know you have the power to move and to change these things. My goodness, if we would ever catch the concept of what prayer really is, we would become prayer warriors. God's Holy Spirit is the key to prayer. Paul says, pray at all times and on every occasion in the power of the Holy Spirit. Imagine, think about this just for a moment. Imagine, I'll put it into a football illustration. I kind of like football illustrations. Yesterday was kind of a wild game for us Buckeye fans. At least the first half was. And uh, imagine if I had a relationship with Ryan Day where I could call the coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes and I could call him any time I wanted to and he would pick up his phone. No matter what was going on, he'd pick up his phone. I was invited to his house. I was a close friend of his. Just imagine that I had this kind of a relationship with Ryan Day. The other day, I'm sitting, we're getting ready to watch the game and Tyler came over with Peyton Sue and Paige. Peyton Sue's over there looking and I said, got on my phone and I went, hey coach, I'd like to know what your game plan is for today. And I just sent a text out. I looked over at Peyton Sue and I said, do you know who I'm talking to? And she said, yes I do, Keith Redford. (laughs) You did that last time I was here. I said, well, how'd you know I didn't, I wasn't talking to Ryan Day? Like I had some kind of influence here. I don't have any influence there, but imagine that, right? Now, that pales in comparison to your seat at the table in the Father's house. You have so much more power and authority in Christ. Man, and we just don't take advantage of it. Prayer is not just for emergencies, but for all times and on every occasion. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Our attitude is to be one that we pray without ceasing. This does not mean that we constantly stop and have our heads bowed and our eyes closed. And don't do that if you're driving, by the way. But what it does mean is that we have a prayerful attitude, constantly communicating with God the Father about every situation that life throws at us. Remember, prayer is about having conversation with God, having relationship with God, both listening to Him and talking with Him. I'm trying to figure out what God is doing and wanting me to do in everyday circumstances of my life. So I'm talking to Him. we got Christmas coming up here soon. We're going to be in the stores. It's going to be a crazy time. How many of you stop and you're in this long... (laughs) I told you I was in this long line. We were in uh, Perrysburg and, or Rossford. They're right there together on the same road, by the way. And we were there and we're in this long line and I, I'm thinking, oh my goodness. But we get up there and then the lady shuts her register down. She comes up to us and she says, you tell everybody they can't get in line after you. Are you kidding me? I'm not doing that. I have everybody in this store mad at me. I'm not telling people they can't get in line after us. But we began to think about what it was that God was doing with us in that line. The guy who was actually doing the line, he was not a cashier. He had got pulled up. And he, he told us when we got up there, they were telling people, if you didn't come to work today, you were fired, you know. And so it was, it was quite, and so we tried to be as kind as we could be to that gentleman. Why? We're listening to the Lord. I want to know why am I here? What is it that God's wanting me to do? Are you tracking with me on this? That that there's more to life than just what's going on here to frustrate me. There are things that are happening that God is doing, right? It's not just about making Doug mad. That's too easy. You can make Doug mad anytime. So quickly, what keeps God from speaking to us? Here's some extra help. Number one, lack of faith. We don't believe He will speak to us. Number two, when He does speak to us, we don't obey what He says. Remember Jesus said, why do you call me Lord and not do the things that I say? 
busyness. We are so busy in life, we're distracted. And we don't talk to the Father. And I want to tell you something, by the way. I won't belabor this. God wants time alone with you. If you don't give God some time alone, He might just take some time alone. Might be in the middle of the night when you're sleeping. Or He might rearrange your schedule of your day so that you can get alone with Him. Would would God allow our car to break down and cause us to have to wait for a tow truck or a ride? Would God allow us to run out of money and have to stay home, spend some time with Him? (laughs) See, sometimes things are happening. Remember we've talked about watch the circumstances of your life. Sometimes things are happening because God needs some time with you. Number five, prayer is for everyone, especially for your leaders. It's It's the great Apostle Paul that says to pray for him. And then everyone is in need of prayer. Paul is in need of prayer. We must not be selfish in prayer and pray only for ourselves, but we must pray for all Christians everywhere. We must not be too embarrassed to ask for prayer. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Why? Because of whom to which we pray, and that is God. Pray for your elders. Pray for your preachers. Pray for your teachers. Pray for your leaders in the church. Pray for your leaders in the nation. Pray for everyone and especially all those who are leaders. Paul says stay alert and be persistent in your prayer. Prayer is not passive, but it is to stay alert and be persistent. You are active in this prayer. You're proactive by staying alert. You're being watchful as to what God is doing. How then can we stay alert? We must have a spirit, a spiritual mindedness. Psychologists define mindlessness as a tendency toward mental drift. It is a failure to be fully present, a lack of attending to the present moment. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever driven your car to Walmart and forgot where you parked it? That's what we're talking about. By the way, let me tell you, I can go one step further than that. I drove my car to Walmart parking lot, got out there, couldn't find my car, and then at the end of all that, remembered I drove the other car. (laughs) Yeah, you thought you were messed up. You got nothing on me. Ken Ward used to say, Doug, every time you think you got it bad, just look at me, right? I got it much worse than that. If that's true, you might be dealing with some of this mindlessness state. To be spiritually minded is to be watching and looking for God to be at work in your life at all times. I expect God to be doing something in and through me every day. I'm constantly looking for, listening to the prompting of God's Holy Spirit. Some people will say from time to time, I'm not sure what to pray for. I'm reminded in Revelation chapter 3, Jesus told the church in Philadelphia that He would open doors that no one could shut, and that He would shut doors that no one could open. I believe Jesus is opening and shutting doors in our lives if we'll watch for them. I encourage you to pray for Jesus to open those doors and to shut those doors. In in the Philippians chapter 4, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing but to pray about everything. So let me ask you today, what's heavy on your heart? What are you concerned about? These are the things that you are to pray about. If I'm concerned about my children, if I'm concerned about my job situation, if I'm concerned about my finances, if I'm concerned about my state of my country, whatever it is that I'm concerned about, this has become your prayer list. This is where you go to the Father. Whatever is troubling you, whatever is on your heart, that is what you need to pray about. Your worry list is your prayer list. Listen to me. This is true. If you do not pray about what you're worried about, you will worry about everything that's on that list. The antidote to it is prayer. And this same passage says, and then God 
will give you the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. If you want peace in your life, it comes through praying in the Spirit. Praise team, come on up. I'll try to hit this last one fast. Prayer is used to accomplish God's will on earth as it is in heaven, which is sharing the gospel. Paul could have prayed for a lot of things, or asked them to pray for a lot of things. But what he did ask them to pray for was that he would be able to speak boldly for Jesus, the message of the cross of Christ. Paul did not try to get his will accomplished in heaven, but God's will accomplished on earth. Paul's goal was the furtherance of the kingdom of God. Prayer is to be used as a means by which we spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. We communicate with our commander-in-chief, God Himself. We get His marching orders through prayer. And then we pray in the Spirit. Closing remarks here. (sighs) Prayer is being persistent and persevering before God. Prayer is where we go on the offensive and exercise spiritual authority in life. God will not do for us what we will not do for ourselves. We need to invite God into the affairs of our lives. And then He will give us power when we ask for it. But we do need to ask for it. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But you must first submit to God. Please stand. Jesus says we're to always pray and not lose heart. The reason He said that is because it is easy to pray and not hear the answer right away and lose heart. Keep praying. You need to be persistent in your prayer. Prayer does, among other things, this. It matures us and it grows us in our faith. Prayer to God is an issue of faith. Not necessarily faith to believe that God can answer our prayer, but that He will answer our prayer. That He will do what's best for us. That He will guide, guard, and direct us. I want to encourage you. Oh my God. The power of prayer. I want to encourage you. Be a warrior. Go to prayer. Today, if we can help you in any way. Praise team's going to lead us. If we can assist you, won't you come? While we stand and sing together.
Well, give a guy a microphone and he just mutters through it. Give a guy a microphone and you get a great sermon. Right, Doug? Anyway, um, I've got some announcements to make, but uh, first off, I'd like to tell you a joke. A skeleton walks into a bar and he orders a beer and a mop. Skeleton shows up at heaven's door and Peter says, where have you been? We've been waiting for you. Skeleton says, I'm sorry, I overslept. He doesn't have a body anymore. He is. <laughs> and then uh, the other one is uh, the, what's a skeleton's favorite rock group? And it's the Grateful Dead. <laughs> so anyway, Jan, you got something you want to say? You All right, Michelle has an announcement here too. And the first time I read it, I, I said crackpots. And it's crockpots. <laughs> anyway, get your crockpots ready. They're having a chili contest for the harvest party on Sunday, uh, October 29th. Uh, if you're cooking chili, uh, if, you, if cooking chili is not your thing, then you can bring a side uh, or something else to eat. There's also hot dogs are here, and all ages are welcome. So... Uh, if you bring all your kids, and I think we do trunk or treat out here. It's a lot of fun. Um, the Ken and Sarah Ward family would like to thank everybody for their thoughts and prayers for our family during the time of the loss of Ken's dad. Uh, we are so blessed to have such a loving family and here and don't want to take you for granted. We appreciate you all so much. Um, Kim Leach wants us to pray for Dan and Brenda Ransom for their health. And also to continue to pray for healing for my state or store director, Ashley. Uh, her husband, Mike, has, uh, is in the hospital with blood clots. And she also has praises in here that her mom's CT scan came back good and that she's loving her new department. Woohoo! New job. And then uh, Brian here had uh, evidently uh, twisted his ankle or stepped in a hole or something. He has a bad sprain. And it says, if anyone has crutches to loan, they'd appreciate it. And I think I have crutches at home, so I think I'm going to uh, do that. But if I can't find them, you'll send out everybody a text. Anyway. Oh, and uh, lastly, here we have uh, Ma Maggie Beaker. She says, uh, please pray for my friend, Sarah Mall, and her dad, because her mom cleaned out the bank account and then took off with a friend and went to Florida, uh, got on an airplane, went to Tampa, Florida. Uh, she's suffering from paranoid schizophrenia and depression. Um, her phone's off, and she's been a missing person in Florida and Ohio, and she's since last Thursday. So we've got to pray that she gets found safe and uh, get back to her family. So, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the day, and we just thank you so much for the morning and the that you've given here, the, the crisp fall temperatures uh, were a pleasant uh, change, along with the sunshine. Um, Father, we just thank you for the message that you give us today on prayer prayer, and how we should pray at all times and in, in the Spirit. Father, we just call on that Spirit now to uh, give you these prayer requests and give you thanks for uh, being with the Ken Ward family and the loss of the Ed, and we just uh, pray that you would continue to be with that family, and I know as they uh, go on, go forward, uh, they will always have memories that will um, bring joy to their heart and a tear to their eye, maybe. So thank you so much for him and his witness and his uh, leadership in their family. He, he will be surely missed. Father, we want to continue and pray for Dan and Brenda and Ransom and their health, 
And dear God, I know Dan, especially since he's had a series of strokes, and to be with Brenda and her health needs, uh, continue to pray for healing for Ashley and husband with his blood clots, and we just give you praise for um, Kim's mom having a good CT scan and how she's loving her new department. And Father, be with Brian and his ankle, help him keep off of it and keep it up to keep the swelling down. And I pray that it's not serious enough that, uh, you know, um, tore ligaments or anything like that or even broke a foot. Um, pray that uh, it's not as bad as it uh, seems. And Father, lastly, we want, we want to lift up Sarah Mall. You know, pray that she's found. Pray that she can get back to her family. Um, pray that you'd be with her in her mental state and her depression. And, um, you know, she can be returned home. So, Father, thank you so much for everybody that's here today. Thank you so much for blessing us with uh, every good gift. And we just praise you always in Jesus' high and holy name. And until we say, until we get here again next week, amen. <laughs>